Okay, welcome to example 9. We're going to be looking at how to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. If you haven't had a look at finding the determinant of matrices, uh, then go and have a wee look. Also, we're going to be using elementary row operations, and we had a look at that in systems of equations. So if you're not sure about them, I would suggest you go back and have a look at some of the videos that I've made on uh, the elementary row operations, because other otherwise it's going to be a wee bit confusing what I'm doing here. So, uh, to calculate the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix, we first of all should determine that we can find the inverse of it. And we do that by finding the determinant. And just to save time, uh, I've already done the calculation here. Hopefully that's familiar to you. The determinant of this matrix A is 1, and therefore... Because the determinant is not zero, there is an inverse to find. So it just saves any tears of trying to find an inverse when you could have just found out quite quickly that it's a singular matrix. Okay, so we're happy to go on. I'm confident that there is an inverse. So the way we do this is we're going to set up um, matrix A. We're going to write it down 1, 1, 1, 2, negative 3, negative 1 and 5, 2, 3, and we're going to augment that, which means we're going to add to it a second matrix on the right-hand side, not like the like in the systems of equations we would put the, the constant matrix on the right-hand side. What we're going to put is the identity matrix or the unit matrix of the same order. In other words, 3 by 3 unit matrix. Okay. Now what's going to happen is we're going to uh, use elementary row operations to make the left hand side our target is we want to make the left hand side into a unit matrix and we're going to end up with nine elements we're going to end up with a three by three matrix on the right hand side of which this is going to be the inverse matrix of a that sounds like magic but it's just wonderful mathematics so let's try and do that i'm going to try and do it quickly it's it's a long process so just bear with me so the first thing I would normally do in solving a system of equations is I'd, I'd try and to get an, a, a, what we call an upper triangular matrix. So we want to make the lower three elements zero. And we'd start off with these two elements here. If I To make these zero, I'm going to do uh, two row one. If I multiply row one by two and subtract row two from that, that's going to make the two into a zero. And to make the five into a zero, I'll do five row one, subtract row three. Okay, so if I do that, our row 1 will stay the same. And if I do, row 2 will become 2 1s are 2, subtract 2 is 0. 2 1s are 2, subtract negative 3 is 5. 2 1s are 2, subtract negative 1 is positive 3. And keeping going, 2 1s are 2, subtract 0. 0, subtract 1 is negative 1. And 0, subtract 0 is 0. Moving on to row 3. I'm multiplying row 1 by 5. 5 1s are 5. Subtract 5 is 0. 5 1s subtract 2 is 3. 5 subtract 3 is 2. And the second part, I've got 5 subtract 0 is 5. 0 subtract 0 is 0. And 0 subtract 1 is negative 1. So that's us got uh, our first two zero terms in the bottom left. What we would again normally do then is we would want to make that zero as well. There you could do more at the same time, but I'm just trying to f give you a kind of structure to do this. And so in order to get that into zero, I have to use rows two and three. So I'm going to say three times row two, subtract five times row three. And that will give both these elements 15. Just going to bring this up a bit. So row one stays the same, as does row two. And then we've got row three now becomes zero, subtract zero. Three fives minus five threes is zero. Three threes are nine, subtract ten is negative one. We've got then six, subtract twenty-five is negative nineteen. We've got negative 3 subtract 0 is negative 3. And then 3 subtract negative 5 becomes 5. So that's me got an upper triangular matrix uh, of sorts here. Now instead of leaving it there, we can't, we've got nothing to solve. So what we need to do is start to chip away at the upper elements, these three elements 
here. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a way to get um, that made zero. So what we can do is actually just subtract row five, row two from row one. So if I were to do five row one, subtract row two, the crucial thing is not to introduce terms, non-zero terms back into that bottom left-hand corner, okay? And at the same time, I also am going to uh, do, trying to find, make this zero as well, and I can do that using row two and row three. How would I do that? Well, again, I'm gonna take row two, and I'm going to add to that three times row three, because that's a negative one, if I make that negative three and add them, they will cancel out. So in doing these two operations, I'm gonna make those elements zero. So let's go ahead and perform them very carefully. So this time, uh, I can't, row one's not gonna stay the same. Let's check. So five ones are five. Take away zero is five. In the second column here, I'm gonna have five ones are five, subtract five is zero. And in the third column, five ones are five, subtract three, is two. If I keep going, I'm going to have five subtract two is three, zero subtract negative one is one, and zero subtract zero is zero. At the same time, I, I'm then going to do row two plus three row three, sorry, oops, three row three, and that's going to give me row two plus row three, zero plus zero is zero, five plus three times zero is still five. I'm gonna have three plus negative three is zero because I'm multiplying the negative one by three. If I keep going on the right hand side, I'm gonna have two plus three lots of negative 19, that's negative 57. So two minus 57 is negative 55. Going to the next column, I'm gonna have negative one add Three lots of negative three is negative nine. So negative one add negative nine is negative 10. And then the last one here, I've got zero plus 15 is 15. I've not decided to change uh, row three at all. So that keeps that there just now. Okay, so I'm nearly there. Um, what I need to do, is still one place that's still not zero, and that's this one here. So what could I do here? The only one I want to change, I don't want to get uh, any other term in here, so that's why I'm gonna go with row one and row three, because the zeros here will make that unchanged. So if I go to row one, and because that one is negative, I'm gonna add two times row three. You agreed? Because the two, negative two and the two will add together to give me zero. Okay, so let's try that. So row one plus two times zero on the bottom is just still five. Zero add zero is still zero. And here we're gonna have two plus negative two is gonna give me zero. And on the right hand side, I'm gonna have, that's three plus two lots of negative 19, that's negative 38. So three minus 38 is negative 35. Um, we'll have one plus negative six, that's two lots of negative three is negative six. One subtract six is negative five. And then lastly, zero plus 10 is 10. Uh, there's no change to uh, the others. What I'm going to do is I'm just I could do something at the moment, but I'm going to do it all at the same time. I'm just going to rewrite these two at the moment, and you can see now that all we've got on the left hand side are elements in that principal diagonal. But we don't have ones in them, and that's the last thing that we need. You could do it at any point. You could keep trying to divide through. So really what we want to do here is we want to divide row one. So we want a fifth of row one, and that's going to make that one. We also want a fifth of row two, and that will go to one. And we want effectively the negative of row three so that that changes to positive one. So in doing that, that will give me one, if I divide all the elements of row one by five, 
I get negative 7, negative 1, and 2. If I divide the elements of row 2 by 5, I get 0, 1, 0, negative 11, negative 2, and 3. And if I divide or multiply uh, row 3 by negative 1, either way around, I get 0, 0, 1, 19, 3, and negative 5. Okay, so what I've done here, I've effectively reversed the order of uh, the two matrices. I've now got a unit matrix on the left and uh, and some other 3 by 3 matrix on the right. And the beautiful thing is that the inverse of matrix A, which we started off with, is now the right-hand matrix. Negative 7, 1, 2, negative 11, negative 2, 3. 19, 3, and negative 5. I'm not going to spend the time to prove it. You could multiply A by its inverse and show that you get the identity matrix. But I think we've, you've been with me long enough here. That's the strategy of it. Okay, So try and do the same one again yourself. Try some other ones using the same process. Or you don't have to do it exactly uh, as I've done it. There are other options, but that's one way to find the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix. So I hope that's been helpful.